Welcome to the channel that covers everything where health and technology meet. Today, we're reviewing the SoulCycle Connected Fitness Bike. And as always, we're going to start reviewing the bike itself and then move on to the Connected Fitness portion. And at $2,500, this bike competes against the Peloton Bike Plus and the SoulCycle. Some pretty stiff competition. And to be honest, from a bike perspective, it held its own. And let's start the bike part of this review with the overall build quality of the SoulCycle bike. And it's pretty darn good. It is stable, it's strong, it's well built. Welds are great, strong metal. Underneath you when you're riding, it feels very stable. Only good things to say about the build quality. Now as far as seat goes, I thought it was great. This is obviously gonna depend on your body and how well you fit to this, but the cutouts are there. The fit is your typical indoor cycling seat. The cushion is firm, but there. So overall comfortable. I didn't have a problem at all. Good to go. And moving on to pedals. And whenever I talk about these things, I always say something along the lines of, I want a pedal that has clip-ins on one side and cages on the other. So that way your entire household can be supported. Well, this one went a little bit of a different route that I haven't seen before. And that is different style clip-ins on each side. So you have Look Delta over here, SPD over here. So if you have a household of riders, they're gonna be happy with their options. Something that stood out to me about this bike is the adjustability. And something I've noticed is a lot of bikes are trending towards what I call three-way adjustable, meaning the seat goes forward and backwards, up and down, but the handlebar monitor assembly only goes up and down, not forward and backwards. What with the Soul Cycle, the seat goes forward and backwards, up and down, and the entire handlebar monitor assembly does go forward and backwards as well as up and down. So you're really able to adjust this bike quite well to you and will fit a lot of people. Some that people that are on the taller side start to feel like your knees are getting too tight or you just don't feel like the bike fits you that well. Even though you can kind of make it work, this one, it just truly can fit you. And same thing on the opposite side. If you're shorter, you can pull it in and really make it fit you. So I do really like that about this bike. But in my videos, I always talk about everything that I noticed. And one thing that did come up is I went to go adjust this real quick after I noticed the seat was a little loose and it completely fell apart. And this doesn't just come out. I don't know how to fix it yet. I have not called SoulCycle, so I don't know how that process is going to happen. But parts in there just kind of fell out the bottom. I can hear some of them. Other parts just kind of fell out and are laying around. So I don't know how that's going to go as far as fixing, but I always tell everything I notice. Last and most importantly is the resistance. Now, I normally talk about quality, range, top-end resistance. And again, we're comparing against the Peloton Bike Plus and the Velocor, two very, very good bikes that I love the resistance on. And this one is comparable to those. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It's very comparable to those. It's a very good bike. And the reason I'm keeping that short is I want to leave a little time about the feel and the noise from this bike. Now, I did some quick research and other people said that it was very smooth, it was very quiet. But I review as I get the bike and what I experienced with the bike that was given to me. And in this case, this bike is not quiet and it is not smooth. And when I say smooth, I mean smooth in the sense that you can feel a vibration through the bike. You can feel a feedback. The smoothness is still there as far as the feedback, the resistance, the when you change it, you want that uphill feedback or you want that downhill or you want that flat road sensation. It's all there. It's all great. But there's a bit of a vibration that comes through. It almost feels like there's a ribbed belt in there. Now, when I read stuff, they said smooth belt, so I don't know what the real story is, but there's just a slight vibration, and I actually don't mind it, to be clear, if you think I'm pointing out bad things. It almost makes you feel like you're riding a real bike, like you're getting that feedback from the road coming up through the bike. You can feel it through the pedals. And when I say vibration, that's probably not the right word because that makes it sound like it's about to break. It's just more of a sensation where you can feel that road feel coming up through the pedals. So whatever's going on in there, you can feel that a little bit. Now, the other thing I noticed is that there's a little bit of play in the pedal. So as I'm pedaling, you can feel just a little bit of gap happening there. And sometimes it will kind of spin ahead on you and then you catch up and you'll feel just a little bit of a clicking noise. It didn't affect me. It didn't really even bother me. It's just something I've never felt on any other bikes. I don't know if that's a problem or if it's the way it's designed. I haven't been able to figure that out, but it's what I experienced. Again, it didn't take away from the ride, but I'm gonna report every detail. Now getting ready to move on to the connected fitness portion of this video, but if this is helping you out in any way. If you don't mind, hit that like button, huge assist for my channel, and I really, really appreciate it. Moving on to the connected fitness portion of this review, let's start with the user interface. And I'm gonna say it just feels like it's at the beginning of their journey. It's a very simple user interface, which could be a good thing. It just doesn't feel as feature rich or as well built out quite yet, but it more than gets the job done. 
So basically, you're just going to have three areas to move around in this user interface. You're going to have your main screen kind of think of like your Netflix where it says, hey, here's material I suggest for you. I think you might like this. Then they have your ride selection screen where you're going to be able to just see all different sorts of ride types and do filtering to find out exactly what you want and get into the ride that you want to do that day. And then a settings screen just to do different things you want with the bike, setting up Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connections, things like that. As far as the overall experience goes, it works pretty well. I did notice sometimes that like the feedback on clicks isn't quite there, so you can't tell if you clicked on something, so you hit it again, and then it kind of delays and goes. But for the most part, it worked pretty good. I just, again, I feel like it's kind of at the beginning of their journey. And this is some that, as I review in six months, these are all software things that could easily be improved. So I'm just gonna leave it at that and say, when I review this again, I imagine this will be a much different review, but overall, gets the job done. Moving on to the content or the rides that you can do with the instructors on the Soul Cycle. If you've never watched one of my videos before, I often say some long lines of the Peloton's here, everything else is down here. Not that they're bad, you can just tell that they're a step down. The Peloton and the instructors and how they build their media or their content, they just know what they're doing. And for the first time, I'm actually going to say that someone is in the middle of that. If Peloton's here, I'm going to say Soul Cycle is right here. They are very close to Peloton level or caliber quality. And what I mean by that is just the production value. They change views, they have an alternate rider view. So sometimes they show the instructor, then they show like the, what we'll call the B rider, and then they just switch the angles and there's just a production value that keeps it visually entertaining. Another thing they have going for them is the quality of the instructors. And to be clear, getting on a bike like this and talking to a camera and staying engaging, staying motivating, being able to have material to talk through the whole ride, that is a skill. And sometimes on other bikes, it's still motivating, it's still good, but you can just tell. You can you have a feeling that it's not quite as polished, they just don't know how to talk to camera for that long. It just doesn't have those same vibes that you get from a Peloton caliber bike. And with the Soul Cycle, I'm gonna say that they have that skill. They know what they're doing to talk to that camera for 30 or 45 minutes and just have you feel like you have a little bit of a connection there. Like you're into the ride, you're motivated and all those things that you want to feel with something this expensive and that big large monitor in front of you, you get that. So next I want to talk about ride data. And generally bikes in this price range, you get a couple key metrics. You get the cadence or how fast you're pedaling and you get the resistance, how tough you're making it to pedal. Well, with this bike, you actually don't get the resistance. You do get the cadence, but resistance is nowhere to be found. And that was a big adjustment for me because as a bike of this caliber, I want to know where my setting is. I want to kind of have a feeling of, I like to start at 42 or whatever my number is and kind of build from there. It's just a number in your head that helps you know how hard you're working and hold yourself accountable. So not having that was a bit of adjustment, but they actually replace that value with something a little different. They use the stages power meter. So they actually have a device on the pedal that gauges how hard you're pedaling and feeds it up to the bike. So it shows a true power output that's read from an actual sensor on the bike. So this is actually pretty neat. And what it really probably comes down to is what type of rider are you? Do you wanna know your resistance and use that as part of your ride structure? Or do you just want a true power output? Now, one thing I will say is the rides that I tested on this, the instructors didn't seem to reference that very much. They didn't say, hey, let's try to hit a power output of this. It wasn't really incorporated into the ride. so. It's a value on the screen for you, but it doesn't do a whole lot for you. It's just really there for you. And if the instructors are referencing it, it makes it much more usable. It ties the bike into the connected fitness experience. And I think you'd get a lot more out of that. And my assumption is over time, that's something that they'll actually build into things. But at this point in time, it wasn't used a lot. So that might be a bit of a factor in my decision, but both quality options. So up to this point, I basically only had positive things to say about this bike, but here's where I feel the SoulCycle bike is really lacking at this point in time. Now, when you compare to a lot of other bikes, as far as what they offer for content, they have a lot of things that offer a lot of versatility and a lot of ways to use the bike. As an example, a lot have ways to cast or monitors that swivel for off the bike content, such as cardio, yoga, strength training, stretching, meditation. This, none of that. But good quality scenic rides, not on this. AI led rides? No. So the point I'm trying to make is there's not a lot going on with this bike. It is soul cycle content and only soul cycle content. So probably the biggest factor on this bike, and normally when I talk about decision factors, it's about the features the bike has. What are the cool bells and whistles that set it apart and make you like it or not? But with this one, I think the biggest decision factor is do you like how soul cycle rides are built? 
they are different than pretty much anything else. I call it more of a dance on the bike. You're kind of going in and out, moving your arms, bouncing around, doing different movements instead of just cycling your feet and following instructors as far as how hard you're riding or how fast you're riding. You're really moving around and getting into it. And this is something that I see a lot of people going, oh yeah, I love it. You just get into it. You're kind of having a party on the bike. And there's some people that are like, that's just too much for me. That's not my style. So I will try to put footage on the screen, but I think that's something you need to pay attention to. Look at how they build their rides out and how they do have you kind of dance on the bike and then watch other videos and see how that structure is and identify which one relates to you because that's probably going to really help you decide if this is a bike for you or not. You really need to love the Soul Cycle vibe and how they get you moving on the bikes to enjoy this specific bike. And another feature that ties right into that dance or club environment is the speaker quality on this bike. It's a little bit better than the other bikes. It's still not great. It's not going to shake the house, but it does have a couple subwoofers. It has some quality speakers, so it's able to get the volume a little higher than other bikes. It's able to have a little bit more range and quality sound. And then it has those subwoofers to add that little bit of punch. So when you're just getting into it, you feel that music just hitting you and it does add to that experience. So that is a nice feature of the bike. So to summarize this bike, it has great bones, which means it has great potential. It has a quality monitor, quality speakers, quality build. It has the stages power meters on the other side here. So it has a lot of unique things going for it and it could really end up being a good bike over time with a lot going for it. My concern is just at this point in time, unless you absolutely love that soul cycle vibe and how they build out those rides, I worry that you just might feel like you don't get enough out of this bike. You don't have enough variety. You don't have enough things to keep you interested or you might just find that you don't really tie into that vibe and you don't connect to this bike as much and it ends up just not being what you could enjoy. So nothing else I do recommend just watching some of my other videos and getting a comparison for what the other bikes offer because that might help you come back to this and go, wow, I do like what they offer. That's my bike. Or you might go, no, I like the structure of other bikes better. I like the variety. I like to know them, be able to mix it up and just keep myself entertained and get more out of my purchase, get more value out of that purchase. So that is how I would approach this bike and whether it might be the right one for you. But again, great bones. It's a quality bike. Just I wish it had a little bit more going for it to make it justify the cost. Well, I truly hope the video has helped you out. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to stay on top of everything health and fitness. And until next time, here's to a healthier you and have a good one.